very good episode. All right, Thanks. let me since we had to do it this way, let me go in and uh, let me go in and share it real quick. It's going to take a couple of minutes to get people in here. Uh, That's not a problem. Since the the original one didn't work, right, let's see. Keith Anthony Blanchard has a birthday today. Okay, there we are. We're on the screen. Let's get the word out. Whew. Powerful energies the last few days. I've never seen people talk about it so much. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Interesting and... times. All right, so now let me try one more. Let's see. Uh, see if I can put it on your page. All right, here we go. Yeah. I've been getting, uh, yeah, I just stuck it on your page. I might need to accept the. Uh, look, it looked like it, well, yeah, but. No, I, think, well, yeah. No, I think it's just gone up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so let me get off of here so we can have a good signal. Let me set the page up. All right, we got Deborah Denori's in the house and a few other people. Let me, let me get the phone out and I can I can track it that way too. Yeah, I think what it was, it doesn't matter. We're here now. That's all that matters. It is. Let's see here. Come on, work for me. Now, now they're coming in. It wouldn't allow you in at first. Yeah. Okay. I think we got the bugs worked out. I think Beeline was having a little problem, which is another reason we want to go to our own website, have our own stream, our own server. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, get out from under the issues that we can't control, such as being uh, being uh, receiving. Our, we we received our first strike. For removal from YouTube yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh, congratulations. Isn't that crazy, man? Uh, that's that's the last thing I would. That's the last thing I would have ever thought would have happened. But it just goes to show, because we're just playing the mixtapes from this show. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're just. That's all it is. It's not even any music or anything. It's just it was twelve hours of that over three days, and and they and I asked them. They I said, "What is the problem?" They said, "It's content." That content is inappropriate. So oh I guess talking God. about ascension and <laughs> star visit, star family visitation, and all the stuff that we go through from the heart is uh, somehow uh, re revolutionary. Revolutionary. <laughs> totally, so, yeah, totally uh, inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So the I was telling you. Oh yeah. All right. So everyone, <clears throat> it's still kind of early over here. I mean, I've been up for quite a while, but I've been downloading all morning. So forgive me, we had a little technical problem, and um, um, we're back on now, so let me just formally roll the show out, Soul Speaks 5D, it's Todd Medina, and today we're having a conversation with my brother, my beautiful brother, Miguel Dean. I love Miguel because, uh, you know, he's uh, he's very raw, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's very honest, and uh, he's also very gifted, and he's also... Uh, carries a lot of sacred wisdom which only comes from the inner work that we all that we all eventually have to do because you can't miss a step on the soul highway but um yeah and i and i love that you know the last show we did was a spontaneous show with karen Starr. uh he was very vulnerable uh i know since then uh he's gone uh, on a little trip and had some exciting things happen in his life so uh without further ado welcome to the show miguel it's good to see you thank you todd thank you that what uh what uh what's the right word um yeah it, that was quite a, an, an introduction so thank you thank you yeah i can't time i'm not great with timelines and stuff R roughly when was it that we the show with karen star <laughs> that a year ago two years ago? Uh -huh. <laughs> i think it was about i when did you go to when did you go to israel uh god where are we now yeah. <laughs> I know I'm the same way. That's why I'm 
I'm looking for a point of reference too. But... Yeah, what planet are we on? Uh, yeah, I think it was, it was about four weeks ago I went to Israel. Okay, yeah. So it, I wasn't quite sure, but it, yeah, now I'm sure. It was right before, and by the way, uh, to everyone out there in the audience, whether you're seeing this on the replay or the live, uh, as I was talking about the YouTube thing, uh, Facebook has come down on us in, in the original page, Soldier One Studios page, and then also in the Soldier group. So I went to my own personal page 16 months ago and went under the radar, and we were able to get around the algorithms. Uh, since we've been playing the mixtapes, uh, Facebook as well has shut us down. People aren't getting notifications. So what I'm trying to say is please, uh, if these shows resonate, please share on the live or the replay because they're not. we're not getting the crowds we were. We're not... We're not uh, we're, not, we're, we're being controlled for the time being until we break away. But anyway, so Miguel, it was it was right before you went to Israel. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you had gone to, had you gone to Glastonbury prior to that? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. I, I, think, I think the energetically, the way I remember it going down was we did a show together. You then went to Glastonbury. You were in a very vulnerable situation place you put out some great stuff you came back i caught you and karen on the spontaneous and we had a great show and then you went to israel is that not where you went israel and yeah, yeah. and then and then you know i, I just I, I pick up you know bits and pieces i share some of your stuff to the group and uh yeah man it looks like you've been on a hell of a journey for the last what you know that'd be what a couple of months two three months yeah so that's, yeah that's what so what's been what's been up? What do you what have you been going through? Uh, it's a good question, Todd. I, I, I don't really know what I've been going through. You know, it's uh, I'm increasingly. You know, you, when you try and work it out with the mind, it just feels you know it just increasingly seems like the mind isn't the the, the, the right tool for for these times. It's you know working out with the mind's like trying to eat soup with a fork or something mm -hmm. so i don't really know why i totally get what you're saying man i have no problem i mean i totally understand but what i mean the the the, the facts are that yeah i've been you know being careful with language as well you know the old paradigm i guess we'd call it ill new paradigm uh, i've kind of moved from purging to purification purification just feels a bit lighter and a bit easier uh, i'm happier to be being to going through purification than purging i'm a bit fed up of purging it's, a bit, yeah. it's a, bit, a bit dark yeah. and hard work it seems uh, yeah i was watching uh i've been watching a lot of mixtape because we're putting a lot of tape together and i was watching an episode in september with amanda lawrence and i and there was a part where i said yeah you know purge and surge because i at that time i was purging a lot physically emotionally everything i haven't felt that lately uh today i had an encounter or encounter a download or whatever you want to call it integration with a syrian aspect my syrian aspect that, I, that i'm familiar with but it was so powerful i thought i was going to throw up but it wasn't like a purging it was like a pulling from my solars man it was like a, like like i was being pulled out of my body uh, right. At the same time, receiving this data, but yeah, I'm with you, man. I'd rather uh, I'd rather go through purification. <laughs> I'm done with the purging. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's just purify from 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 here on, on onwards. But yeah, I mean, kind of how it manifested for me that my purification was my skin's a bit like my Achilles heel. You know, if something's if there needs to be if there's a safety valve or or something in the body, it, it's my skin. And um, was it? Yeah, it was. It always gets a little bit worse this in in the winter months. This clearing, purging, purification going on in, in the winter, uh, which I, I guess makes sense. You know, that's what nature does, doesn't it? You know, it's time to to get still, to get clear, to the energy to go down, to freshen everything up, ready for the spring. My body seems to do the same, um, and yeah, it was. I mean. It was getting steadily worse, and then I he he headed, headed off to Israel. And as I arrived in Israel with, uh, with 
to meet a beautiful friend of mine, um, Esty. I, I just erupted. My skin just all kind of like erupted in this really fierce, sore, red, itchy. The journey there was, it was like a hero's journey or something. It was like, it took me about 23 hours to get there. I possibly didn't choose the best flights and stuff, but it took me about 23 hours in all. And, and I realized afterwards that I was, this purification was gathering momentum, like, you know. And when I arrived there, I, yeah, I, I was just really ill. And my friend who uh, we've not met, you know, face to face before, you know, there was this kind of bit of a, you know, a, a, a fantasy, I guess, in my head of kind of like, yeah, arriving there all, you know, shiny and <laughs> in best form and, you know, and, uh, all, all ready, <laughs> ready for action. And, uh, I can it, see that. I can visualize it. <laughs> It, remi it reminds me of that uh, Atticus quote. It says, when I, when, I, uh, you know, when I get to the end of the road of my life, I'm going to come tumbling in, uh, you know, tired, spent, and half drunk. <laughs> it was a bit, yeah, it was, it was a little bit like that. It wasn't how I'd imagined to, go, to come tumbling in, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, essentially, SD just had to look after me for six days while I was, while I was in, in Israel because I really wasn't in a good way. Um, wow. And I don't, you know, I have no clear sense of, of you know, what triggered it or whatever. Um, I just, it, like I say, it's something that's come and gone for a while. But it does coincide with this whole interesting 11, 11, um, you know, stuff that's going on. And oh, that's right. Yeah. 11, 11. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And then when I got back from Israel, you know, I, essentially, you know, we just stayed in and just kind of like took it really easy and didn't really see any of Israel at all or get out and about. Uh, we had a lovely time together, but it was a real deep learning for me about, um, you know, receiving and and being. And it was like life was saying, OK, you, you missed a fucking vulnerable. Let's let's turn it yeah. up a bit and see how you handle this vulnerable, uh, you know. So I had to sort of like drop into this deeper vulnerability and just, yeah, be looked after really. And, and, and I'm not really great. I'm probably better at looking after people than I am at looking at, you know, being looked after. So I had to drop into this space and it was, it was really humbling, you know, it was really humbling. And there was a lot of kind of like little boy and mother dynamic, you know, the idea was it was going to be, you know, more of a lover dynamic or what, what you know what, whatever might happen but it ended up I, it was just like the feminine just yeah. look looking after me and me just having to surrender to that yeah. which you know really powerful in itself that is powerful because i mean uh you know at the end of the day we're, we're talking about energy here and that's a that sounds like <laughs> it sounds like you tumbling in and rolling in was uh preparation being stripped down being stripped down to nothing you know yeah yeah what very very yeah. much so. yeah really stripped down and it was like you know some of her family were like oh they want to my, you know my mom wants to meet you and my brother and i was just like oh really i just really don't feel i can see anybody at the moment i just feel so <laughs> like can i just curl up curl up and you know stay in bed but um but yeah and when i got back anyway i eventually got got to the doctors because i'm not good on going to see the doctors because I haven't got a great deal of faith in them, but it, it, it just got worse and worse. It sort of, it, it got a bit better towards the end of the week and then I got back and it got worse and I went and saw the doctor and he kind of looked at me aghast and said, you've got a severe allergic reaction going on there. Was it on your was skin? Like, yeah, it was, yeah, it was all over my skin really. My, my eyes were like sore and there was just like weeping tears all the time and stuff like, you know, wow, was, yeah. you know I've never experienced anything as severe as it before um anyway he said you know so he gave me a load of tablets uh, antihistamines and some steroid cream which i usually not too fond of all that stuff but it was like yeah slap it on you know i needed i need a decent night's sleep and it's all sort of settled down but it's still there in the background you know it's settled down with the medication but so from a physical perspective you know i'm not quite sure what's going on but i always see it as clearing as letting go as you know as purification 
Yeah. So, you know, that, that that's the bulk of it, really, Todd, in, in that, you know, just, and you know, getting up and going to work and doing all the rest of it while all this was going on. You know, I just felt like I was just ticking over, really, and just managing to keep things together. Because when you work for yourself, you know, it's not like you just phone in sick and get paid. <laughs> <laughs> you know well, anything about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to keep working, man. Yeah, keep, I've been working uh, out of my bed a lot lately. <laughs> yeah, I got a little, I got a little tray now. Yeah, uh, I've got one of those. They're great. It's a really good investment. Yeah, um, Lisa Brown gave me an old one that she had. She, you know, she talks about that. She talks about in her ascension for two, three years, she was always horizontal. You know, right. and. And people thought she was crazy. And she'd say, hey, you know, they'd say, what advice can you give me? And she'd say, get horizontal. If you have to go to sleep, go to sleep. Because that's that's the easiest way to um, embody or, you know, uh, transition through this ascension. But, yeah, yeah, I know I know what you're talking about. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and in, in particular, particularly the last uh, few weeks seem to have been, you know, I, I don't mean to use the word heavy in a bad way, but it seems like it's been a, a heavy load on the physical body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it feels, I mean, it always feels a bit this time of year, you know, like it's just time to, to tick over and, you know, sit by the fire and drink cups of tea and just take things steady. But, um, you know, because we have electricity and all this wonderful stuff, everything keeps going at the same pace, you know, regardless of the, the seasons are telling us to slow down and just chill out and you know regenerate um but this year yeah particularly it's just i, I don't want to get out of bed you know i've been struggling to get out of bed the, you know the duvet's extra cozy and you know once i'm up and think things are right things have got eat got lighter although the last couple of days yeah that you know there's been some certain heaviness around and i don't know you know it, it's so hard to, to have you know, we haven't, you can't do any sort of real scientific studies of, because I sometimes think, well, is it just something that I've just eaten that's meant, meant that all of a sudden my energy just feels like I need to lie down? Or is it, you know, because is my body becoming more sensitive to foods that it wasn't sensitive to before? Or is there just some massive wave of energy just hit, that's just hit me? We can never, you know, know for sure what what's doing what really, can we? No, I think... Uh... I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think also that, uh, you know, I mean, of course, I, I interact with a lot of people with the work I do. Mm -hmm. And from what I can gather, you know, our bodies are talking to us. Our bodies mm -hmm. are talking to us. Our bodies are not just a biological, physical vessel. They are a, they are a, a Merkaba, you know. They're a cosmic, solar, whatever vessel, you know, whatever you want to call it. So one thing I'm getting from people um is that you know our body speaking to us which includes you know when we're supposed to lay down and rest you know what are we supposed when are we supposed to eat what are we supposed to eat drinking lots of water uh if your body's telling you get outside you know get outside yeah. that's something i've struggled with and i and i've been over here i landed over here in Kauai four weeks ago and uh and i struggle to get out you know get out of the work mode but now and then my body will say, just get out, you know, go. So yeah. I think there's that part of it. Uh, I do think that that uh, there's obviously it's uh, a lot of energy coming in, especially the last few days. And I think this uh, it's kind of like a copy of what happened to you when you went to Israel. Uh, I think we're all going to roll into this 1212. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, be, I'm not big on the dates and all that but as time go, has gone on I, i'm becoming more and more aware of it but this 12 12 feels huge mm, yeah 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 i'm certainly not planning any 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 more flights in advance let, let's, let's put it that way i'm just gonna you know it it, yeah. it doesn't i just don't know how i'm gonna feel and, and like i say that trip to israel it was it it really did feel like a hero's journey. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't done a great deal of traveling, you know, by myself, but you know, just the thing of making sure you got everything and that your timings are right and that you, you know, you've 
I got all the right bits of paper. And then when I arrived in Israel, the, the hire car people took forever to sort the car out. And then it was an automatic and I've never driven an automatic. It was like, how many other challenges, you know, am I going to, you know, how much more difficult is it, is this going to be, you know? Yeah. But it, but it was, it was really good. It was good. It was a really good experience. It did improve my confidence in my own ability, you know, to, to, to do this stuff. Cause there'd been some fear around it, you know? there had been some fear around the whole traveling and going off but yeah i'm not going i'm not going anywhere i'm just i'm just lying low and just gonna i'm just gonna tick over and let's just see what happens with 12 12 and so on it doesn't feel like the time for making plans really you know i've got a few little projects on the go i'm updating my website and my last book is going to be finished over the Christmas period that I've been working on for a little while, but I haven't had a chance to, to get onto it. But, um, What's that one about? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, I don't know what it's called yet, Todd. Yeah, I like that. What's it about? It, yeah, I can answer that one. It's, um, you, know, you know, no surprise, it's about sacred masculine, divine feminine. Um, it's a... I'm still not quite sure whether it's, whether to say it's based on or it is a true story because it's a story of mine yeah. um, through a, a year relationship with a with a yeah a kind of very interesting woman shall I say we just obviously just met to do some huge catalyst work and you know and, and it's just about how sacred relationship it can be a fantastic key to realizing who you are and overcoming, you know, transforming trauma, moving forward in your life kind of thing, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a conscious love story. It's a, and it's a bit of a two fingers up to 50 shades of gray actually as well. Cause it's, it's um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of bedroom scenes and stuff. I wanted to, yeah. to, to make it sort of uh Hey, that's a, that's a new one in the light keeper circles. I haven't heard one like that, <laughs> but that's well, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was, I had a lot of voices in my head going, well, you know, who are you to write this and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, in the end it was like, well, who am I not to, you know, let's I, I feel you didn't move to write this and let's see what happens. Hey, let's see where it goes. How many yeah. books have you written? How, what, what was this? Will this be the third one? Yeah, the, yeah, it's almost like two and a half, but yeah, this is kind of the third one because the second book is a children's book, a very short book for three to seven year olds, L Little Mouse and the Apples. Yeah, uh, and that one's just uh, I'm still working with a publisher on that. They're, 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 they're still sending me backwards and forwards the images, and the mm -hmm. little mouse still looks like a rat. I keep telling them he looks too, it's too ratty, you know what I mean? He's not looking like a mouse, I want him to look like a mouse, but. They sent me another picture back with a rat in it. So it might end up being little rat in the apples. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so it it sounds like uh, what you just went through, too. And I wonder if that'll influence that book at all. It's, <clears throat> it sounds like you you did some serious alignment, you know, the masculine and feminine. Yeah. Over that, the that, last that, few weeks. Yeah, that, that that's very much what it was about, the, the trip to Israel. It was just this real pull. And it, 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 there was this kind of thing of, why have I have I really done this? Why have I booked this flight? What am I doing? It, it, it was it was like okay, just let go. It's it you know it, it seemed like the right thing to do, so just just go with it. And yeah, you know there were big big shifts, big shifts for me. Um, uh, yeah, around my relationship with the with the divine feminine, I, I guess really, because I, I guess to a certain extent there was a bit of me. That had got that had gotten a little bit distracted um, by the outer world, if you like, and um, yeah, you know all the stuff that's happened since the Goddess Conference in Glastonbury. And um, I remember that. I remember that. Uh, somebody's asking, uh, "What did you learn from the trip?" Let's we we talked about that a little bit, but let's go back to the to the Goddess Conference for people mm -hmm. that watch this that didn't watch the other show. And I don't remember all the details, but you had something pretty, pretty prolific happen over there, didn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was. It was. You know, I I was there. I was I was invited to 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 speak 
uh, about rites of passage and you know uh, authentic sacred masculinity and so on and hold space for some of the men's circles but yeah you know i just found when i when i got there that it was like my brain just got certainly my right brain got taken offline and i was i was just in this really fuzzy headspace the whole time and i could just about focus on what was the next thing that i had to do and i was just increasingly just kind of found myself really blissed out in this kind of you know altered state and yeah it, it, you know this i guess this uh sometimes known as shakti energy isn't it this energy all started moving through me and um you know people that i was coming into contact with or sometimes just hugs or you know were having quite sort of profound energetic experiences and stuff and yeah i just came away yeah with, with this kind of like what was all that about you know and it just took it probably took a couple of months for it all to settle down I, it, yeah it was just like a big long trip really and a big just been in this really altered state that just gradually yeah. faded away you know that was like what in the summer when you yeah were... that was that, yeah, yeah that was like august yeah yeah because i think we did a show right after that that was mm -hmm. that was uh yeah i think you were still in the integration mode when that happened i think i probably yeah, was yeah, you know, and from my perspective, you know, and I and I, I don't even know why I, I want to say this, but I feel like I'm supposed to. <laughs> but from my, from my perspective, the energetically, you know, I saw, you know, I saw you on uh, on Jeff's show. And I thought, well, OK, this guy's, you know, this guy's uh, he's done. He's dug deep into divine union, you know, within ourselves, you know. And uh, I can tell he's he's serious. And then when we did the show, you were kind of integrating and you talked about the subject matter of this book that you're writing. Mm -hmm. And you seemed a little bit off. Uh, I don't want to say off, but like uh, I, and I can speak from my own experience, uh, maybe not maybe not totally connected, maybe not having surrendered. <laughs> to the divine feminine you know and uh because mine happened on june 27th or was it july 27th anyways one of those two whatever the full moon red full moon was so i could kind of feel that in you and then this, and then uh yeah I could, I could feel that 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 last little mm, piece mm -hmm. you know hadn't hadn't connected and i was kind of amazed by it because you you do have so much depth and it sounds like that's what happened to answer Diana's question. Uh, you were talking about that at the top of the show. Um, so it was a congruence or a, a making peace or something with that feminine energy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, with with my and and I always want to say this before I start this. You know, this is my story and it's not my story. But my human story, you know, around losing my mom when I was little meant that there was this real, you know, big trauma and, and stuff around love and woman and relationship and trust and all this stuff. And when I look back, I can see that there have been significant times where there's been a sort of trauma release or something powerful has happened. And it, it, almost every time I've gone, oh, well, that's it now. It's all done now. You know, I don't need to do it anymore. But it, it, it it, it's healed but it seems that it comes up in stages you know and and i had a, a real big eight day sort of trauma release thing a couple of years ago and and then since then it really does feel like it's just kind of tapering off like the bulk of it the work is done but there are still little pieces you know there's there, there's always a get a bit more i guess and this trip to israel was 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 very much about that and i, and I kind of feel like i'm still sort of integrating that in in a way todd you know yeah uh, it's yeah you know i've only just sort of like got back on my feet really you know from from feeling just being so sort of knocked out physically and then sort of catching up with the stuff that i'd fallen behind with a little bit and i'm just sort of arriving at this place where okay just sort of take stock you know where are you now what's happening right now yeah and, uh, and for the most part that 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 seems enough uh you know that seems enough it's just like that thing what's the next step you know what, what have i got to you know what i've got to do in the next hour or the next couple of hours you know and then if i need to know any further than that i can look in the diary because it's written in there but because there's no way i'm going to remember <laughs> i know how that goes 
I know exactly how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm like, I'm like, uh, you know, uh, maybe what's today? Friday over here. So I'm, I'm, uh, I kind of know what I'm doing through Sunday. Through yeah. Sunday, through Sunday, uh, you know, Sunday evening. That's about Excellent. it. Excellent. But, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and the other thing I get from you, which, which, you know, I think has helped me is, uh, we don't have to know everything. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're so frank about everything. You just like, you know, I don't know. I mm -hmm. don't know. You know, I, I'm still integrating. Uh, I need a little time. Uh, yeah, I know what that feels like. And I thought something was wrong with me, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I'd be like walking around like a zombie and, uh, and, and over time I realized that we are, we are, you know, we are integrating this thing and, and our bodies are our bodies or, you know, it sounds strange that, uh, you know, the physical vessel would, would, would transit our parish or whatever, but there's a part of me that understands now that it's not that there's that this, this vessel goes with us. It is us. It's, it's, a uh, part of this you know mysterious complicated uh incredible unknown transition we're going through we call ascension yeah but, uh, you have you helped me with that though you actually did you helped me with just saying hey i don't have to be billy badass <laughs> i can just say i don't know what the f's going on <laughs> yeah 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 uh, that kind of is me really todd yeah and you know I, I i sort of shy away from all this stuff about mastery and, and so on but, you know i think as you probably gathered you know my thing is more just authentic transparent honest vulnerable raw let's just let's just give ourselves permission to be who we are because it, it's it just keeps coming up for me that you know i quite like charles eisenstein's work that you know the more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible and how he talks about you know that the world is is constructed of stories and you know we've got these old stories and we, they're told often enough that we believe them and they just become reality and you know there's a story that you make money and you get happy and and there's an ascension story and there's a story that shamans tell and there's a story that this religion tells and and it's like actually they're all stories and yeah you know and what what makes them real seems to be there's a big part of what makes them real is the extent to which we believe them and the extent of you know our mind our focus determines our reality to a certain extent but it seems to me that it's in you know at the beginning of every conversation we should almost start from this place of look I don't. I know fuck all. You know fuck all. We, we, <laughs> we really don't know anything. We're trying to do these sure. conversations with these, you know, with with these minds, which we know yeah. are pretty limited tools. As you know, as a, a even though they're pretty impressive, but there's an awful lot that they can't comprehend. I have big aspects of denial, probably. You know, there's going to be blind spots, and obviously, I don't know about the blind spots because because they're blind spots. You have yeah. blind spots that you don't know about, and yeah. uh, and and we're all trying to you know process this stuff through a mind that deletes, distorts, and generalizes information. So it's like, yeah. how accurate? You know, it's almost yeah. like what's the point of having a conversation? Like you know, exactly. you put, but if you get you know, so it's okay to have a conversation, but let's not get too attached to the stories and the ideas and and whatever that that we're talking about, because we know it's the ego that likes all that security and definitely and i'm right and this is how it is yes yes you know, what if we just kind of relax a little bit it's like a, a knot that's just just loosened a bit so it's not all so tight kind of thing and just went okay well there's in a way perhaps even all these conversations and stuff are just entertainment perhaps we're just killing time like you know <laughs> we really don't know do we no we don't and i and i like uh what you're saying about that that guy uh stories because you could actually replace the word stories with programs yeah it's it's a it's a this program or that program or an ascension program and you know and everything yeah. does have the yin and yang to it so there's there's truth to it and there's not truth to it you know but what i love is like the story which is not a story a reality i love the the uh the energy and the magic 
and uh, the nonverbal uh, story of like what you did going to Israel or how I ended up over here. I mean, I had the same things going on in my head. I'm like, what are you doing? You yeah. know, what exactly are you doing? Why are you going there? <laughs> how are you going there? And if it and, and I've, I've coined this phrase over the last few weeks, if it doesn't make sense, do it. <laughs> that's to me yeah. what's exciting is it's like yeah, yeah that's to me what's exciting because because uh you know uh, all those stories are the known yeah what we yeah. don't know is what we don't know is what we you know, don't know like i said you know you you knew you need you went to do what you want to do in israel mm -hmm. but you did but your human had no idea what the hell's going on <laughs> no no and, it's and like, i think yeah. that's what yeah. Uh, haven't all this, you know, the great sages and mystics always said to us, you know, drop the mind. You, that you won't, you know, you won't, you won't realize the truth with your mind. It, it, you know, it's the still mind. It's, it's, it's no mind. It's, it's, as we, well, you were just alluded to, it's in the body, no? Is it not as we descend back into our bodies and to our hearts, into our feeling centers? Is that not, it seems that that's more likely to be the, you know the, the the doorway the you know the, the portal the entrance you know if if for no other reason that most religions have told us to keep away from that and made it dirty and sinful and so on so it, you know it just seems to make sense to me it's going to be more about the body and the body intelligence and the heart and the feeling than it is yeah. trying to work anything out with the head exactly yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah. We're experiential you know um and the body not just being human you know i mean yeah. really i mean seriously it's what's it you know i mean you break down the biology or the science or whatever but i mean uh, we've had this thing that the body's human yeah and yeah. uh my feeling is is it's it's much more than that it's you it's know just, as these it's just yeah. a story isn't it? it's just, it's another story yeah. people you know everybody the, the world was flat wasn't it when the story was yeah. the world is flat the world is flat everybody believes the world is flat you know how yeah. many how many other they things are we've just that we just assume or that we've been told or that we've been spoon fed that actually again is it's just a story that have no correlation to truth at all yeah yeah mm. and it's a good story too because uh you know we actually come into this world pretty much for free but we have to pay to leave <laughs> we have to pay to we have to pay to dispose of our body <laughs> that i mean that's a story that you know that went deep <laughs> yeah, that sums it up that sums it up yeah and there, i think was, that's another go ahead go no go on todd your turn go for it no 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 i was just gonna you were laughing and, and that's another thing that's come to me recently especially especially the last couple of days i'm I'm integrating, you know, a lot of stuff and I'm waking up at one o'clock in the morning and I'm, you know, just doing stuff for, you know, to four or five in the morning. And, uh, and I'm laughing, I'm looking at these spiritual memes that are funny, you know, Jesus smoking the joint, rolling the joint, say, when I'm done with this, I'm gonna go walk on water, you know, and, and, and just these different ones of watching comedies, we yeah. forget to laugh, man. And, uh -huh. you know, and, and I put out some memes and some of them were a little bit, you know, on the edge, but, you know, some people got upset, but I thought, you know what, you know, if you can't laugh, I mean, yeah. God, are we that far gone, especially to laugh at yourself? Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the thing that, that I, that's really been a big liberator for me recently is just, God, Todd, don't take it so seriously, man. <laughs> I yeah. mean, just chill the F out. Right yeah and that's the kind of like loosening up as well isn't it it's just loosening it up a little bit and not you know not having to be right and you know and all that sort of stuff it's like you know i, I mean i freely admit that you know i created a story for myself of what life is about is it, essentially it was like it seems to be about um you know finding being more at peace with myself uh you know having more joy more happiness and it seems to be that, that is, there is a direct correlation between that and what I do in the world and how I show up in the world and how, my, how I am with people around me. So that's good enough for me, you know? It's like it gives some meaning and some sort of, you know, uh, some 
storyline to and, and, and plan of a, a loose plan to my life and, and it impacts positively on others around me and then you know other stuff comes in when it's ready to come in really you know yeah. uh, you know exactly the right time yeah. but there, there was something that i wanted to say because i was listening to one of you and i can't remember again because my memory is so hopeless the lady's name but it was one of the shows that you were doing and she was talking about how um language you know that language is uh, she she said that reading and writing and speaking are all uh, sort of 3d mind activities that we have to do and I, it was the first time that i've heard anybody say anything that just kind of resonated with this feeling that's growing with me is that i'm finding although i write books and i post on facebook and all the rest of it i find myself increasingly frustrated with language with the limitations of it particularly with you know in, in message messages and emails written written communication yeah. of that sort when there's an especially when there's an emotive element to it and all the misunderstandings and things that happen yeah. and it keeps coming you know it just keeps coming up for me that you know i think we're, we we are moving towards the, where, where there will be more telepathy where we won't need language yeah. anymore yeah. And, and i think maybe that's a little bit of just this yeah this sense of restlessness and and not settled with, with language like i was there's one bit that gets frustrated with it and don't want anything to do with it and then the rest of the time i'm just you know trying to be really impeccable with my word and and often finding that there aren't the right words anymore anyway or or yeah. there, there isn't a word or the word has become so laden with negative connotations or whatever that it's not fit for purpose anymore yeah so uh, you know that's interesting that i'm noticing i don't know if you if you with all the people that you're talking to is there, there is there anything else that you can yeah. add to that well uh i uh i can tell you from my own experience and i'm a writer i'm a wordsmith <laughs> you know and, I, and and yeah so a when it comes to messages mm -hmm. or even making comments i don't make comments on posts or anything like that but mm -hmm. messages uh it, it it's it's aggravating to me uh i would rather like for instance i never have liked podcast uh -huh. because if you go to most of the podcast on youtube or whatever it's just a screen and you don't see anybody's face mm -hmm. i am a, a i am an absolute believer that the more frequencies that you involve yeah. the better off you are so if it's just me and you and we're looking at each other right here uh there's a lot to be picked up from that frequency that we're sharing and integrating together um and and i think what you're saying is absolutely true because what what i'm finding over the last few weeks and i'm going to say maybe even going back about three months is that the level of telepathy is has gotten so high that when I've interacted with people, particularly in person, uh, I know exactly what's going on, regardless of what's being said. And, mm -hmm. I'm, and I've learned over the last two or three months to respect that. And at the same time, I respect it. And I don't, I, I don't, I'm not saying I'm right all the time at all. But what I'm saying is, is that I respect it enough to, to honor it. And, and, and in other words, I'm not going to say, Hey, you know, you're saying one thing, but you're doing another thing. I'm not going to say something like that. I'm just going to say, Hey, we're going through this transition. I'm doing the same thing. Uh, it's like two different, totally different. It, it, it like where maybe they ran close before they're like mm -hmm. gone separate ways now. And yeah. so it's like, it's like uh, somebody just wrote dissolving. Who's that? Milana, my friend here. Um, but yeah, I think that's what's happening. Uh, and I think uh, uh, even without conscious effort, uh, even without conscious effort, we're picking up on each other's thoughts. And mm -hmm. that can happen. That can happen so many yeah. different ways. You, yeah. know, you don't have to be right in front of somebody. You don't have to be on the cross screen from each other. No. It's going on. It's going on. It's a reality. There's definitely, definitely a lot more clear evidence, telepathy being one of them, of something happening, something you know, people call it ascension and veiling, you know, whatever it is, you know, the end of a 26,000 year cycle, whatever it is, something is happening. And, and it is not uh, even something we have to be conscious of because it's happening anyway. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I guess that's because you, you see, I, I don't I don't spend a lot of time on the internet at all. Uh, you know, I don't I don't watch videos. I don't read. I'm not in too interested. I I used to I had a time where I you know I I read quite a lot and you know and researched and did a lot of workshops and stuff. But these days I just want to walk on the hills and just kind of like do my thing. So I'm not rummaging yeah. around and seeing what other people are doing or learning or watching yeah. masters or teachers. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the same information, then when I do come online or I do have a conversation with somebody, it's like it, it's happening anyway. They're accessing the same information that I'm yeah. accessing by walking on the hills, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and kind of in amongst that it seems to be, you know, it's kind of fueled, if you like, my passion to be to keep pushing myself, not pushing to, inviting myself to step deeper into vulnerability and authenticity because, and, and, and honesty and transparency, because once the telepathy thing kicks in full, there's no secrets, there's no taboos, there's no, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's only with the, you know, the beginning of language that the dishonesty uh, arose, wasn't it? You know, when we stopped being able to feel into each other and, and know what was going on with it without having to try and frame it with, with these things called words and language. So it seems, you know, it just seems to make perfect sense again. And I was watching a comedian um, just, just a little bit earlier, and it's like most of comedy is just about talking about things that are taboo isn't it things that we're not supposed to talk about and they dare talk about them it make all the sense in the world <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. all the sense that, you know they really should be talked about uh, you know an yeah. awful lot yeah so yeah if you look at Le lenny bruce richard pryor george carlin i mean they all they all talked about what was rea reality <laughs> what's reality even made it man they made a joke out of it because it was so yeah. obvious you're, you're right about that with the language too with the language thing too i mean i guess you know i guess at that point in time if that's what you want to call it uh, it was a necessary evil but yeah it doesn't even matter anymore because our, our you know with that telepathy you know i know i i never you know i never saw a bunch of sacred geometry and, and symbology and all that stuff but i see mm -hmm. it now i see it all the time I can see it walking out here uh, in Kauai. I can see, I can see, it's crazy, but I can see like straight lines in the jungle <laughs> and in the sky and little and and you know what I mean. It's it's right. it, it that's the that's the the uh, I guess the code or the the language that you know can't be can't be altered. I guess. Mm. Yeah. I'd put it. Yeah. 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 It's interesting so to see. are you all... doing any are you going to be doing any uh workshops anytime soon you're going to be doing any work online I know uh, you're coming out with the book the book yeah yeah so the the next the the next two i mean little mouse and the apples is is a children's book but it's you know it's for adults as well it, you know I, I think when i wrote it, the, the little bit at the front of it you know i, I really like the idea of when you know because it's about courage, it's about not doing this, following the sheep, and it's about doing your own thing, it's about kindness. The little mouse drops into meditation at one point, you know, so it's kind of, it's 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 woven with sort of love and codes and, you know, and, and, and energy in the story. And I kind of like uh, this, saw this picture of sort of parents reading it to their children, you know, so the child hears it as the last thing before they go to sleep and so they go to sleep with all these nice little seeds of uh you know energy yeah. growing but those seeds will also be in an awful lot of the parents i think for a lot of the parents they'll be they'll read it and you know and unconsciously this stuff's going to go into them as well you know without them really realizing it thinking i'm reading a story for my son but mm -hmm. um actually actually i could learn an awful lot from this so so yeah that's the second book which will be out soon and the third book will be done Thy will be done. Um, I'm working, get just updating my website because that's all falling behind. And next year, it's looking like there's going to be a few things going on. Um, I've been invited to co-host uh, Voices of the Light Tribe event in Glastonbury around the solstice with Anrita Melchizedek. Cool. Uh, that's going to be um, interesting. And Anrita and I are doing a little bit of work together now. 
Um, so there's going to be some webinars and uh, we're, yeah, we're going to see what, what comes, you know, is that we've both been interested in the idea of, you know, having a, the uh, representation slash embodiment of the divine feminine alongside the uh, sacred masculine and, and, you know, doing stuff together. So that's happening. I've been invited back to the goddess conference. So hold on to your pants. God knows what's going to happen. Uh, there. <laughs> hold on to your pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hold um, on to your head yeah 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 uh, uh, that's awesome that's and awesome fest i just got an, infida- an invitation to um help to hold space for the men's circles at tantra fest uk which is taking place this year uh sort of three or four day festival so yeah you know those are the things that i know that's happening todd but you know beyond that based on you know how things are going <laughs> That, you know that I think there's going to be plenty of uh, interesting stuff into yeah. first in amongst that and it is, what it is. <clears throat> it, it, it is what it is at the moment yeah yeah it, it really feels like that mm. it's not a time for making big plans or, or knowing anything too far into the future you know it's yeah. and there's a transition point for me coming up next year which will be interesting in that my youngest son, uh, will be 19 and he's he'll have finished his education um in yeah easter next year and so that means that geographically i don't feel obliged to stay you know in the in the in the vicinity because he, he would come and stay with me uh quite a lot but once he's finished he only comes to stay with me because my house is nearer the school than his uh than his mom's house is so you know he comes and stays with me so he can get an extra hour in bed in the morning but um, but once uh, once his school schooling's done, I, I may relocate. I, I don't know. It's just I've I've been in Malvern for the last twenty odd years because this is where my sons are. Yeah. But they physically need a dad, uh, you know, a- anymore. So I don't know. You know, where are you, Hawaii? You got a spare bed? There? <laughs> <laughs> Only till the twelfth. <laughs> okay, I'll be. Yeah, I don't know where I'll end up, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. Morgan's coming Morgan's coming soon. And I don't you know, I, I think that's part of that. That's that whole, you know, how I ended up here, how I ended up in Sedona, how I ended up everywhere the last two years. So how were you going to Israel? I mean, you know, like you said, you can say, Okay, well, I got this, this, and this, and this coming up in twenty nineteen, but you know, for me it's like yeah. I don't need, you know, I stopped with that. I, I can't even do it anymore. Every time I try to start doing something like that, it never works out. Um, yeah. I, it's just, I, I'm hearing, well, it's not even hearing though, is it? It's feeling, you know, you feel you got to do this. It's mm-hmm. a voice. You can say whatever you want, but you feel it, you, you do it. And and things show you the way. And, uh, you know, it, it just like your trip to Israel. I mean, if I look at the things I went through in Sedona and, and here, uh, they were very purposeful, very meaningful. There were things that my soul needed me to be in a certain place and be around certain people to experience and, yep. you know, elevate, elevate, I guess. You know? Yeah. It's I that, definitely feel expansion. I definitely feel expansion and, and yeah. I can see it in you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, learn everything that you need to, then the mist clears and life opens up the next stepping stone and says, okay, now now step into this and, you know, and start learning and, and growing from these situations, these people. And it seemed like that seemed to be, I did, you know, sort of like year chunks on each stepping stone. Like these days, it, I think, you know, it's the time factor is so condensed that it could be weeks or it could be months. Um, so, yeah, it, it does seem a bit... It's a concentrated, uh, it's yeah. a concentrated, well, again, it's not linear either. So, but I mean, yeah, to me, it's just like, I mean, hell, you look at, if you look at what we're talking about, the time period we're talking about, look how much, look how much has changed in your life and my life since August. I mean, and everybody, yeah. I mean, yeah. know, especially the last couple of months, it's, you know, people are moving at warp speed. This is quantum. So, mm-hmm. um, cool. So what are you doing on twelve twelve? Anything? that's too far ahead that's too far ahead. <laughs> well i think we're putting something together an all-day deal i'll get i'll get in touch with you about it and if you've okay. got links i know your website you're, you're uh upgrading your website but if you got any links 
people are going to want to are going to be asking how do they get in touch with you how do they find you any of your book links put them in the messages in the comments and when you come out when you release that uh 50 shades of ascension <laughs> in december let me know and uh i'll help you put it out through our our network um people have had you know we've had pretty good success with getting people you know getting uh, helping them expand the awareness of whatever their project or book or whatever so uh yeah love to help you with that thank you todd thank you i appreciate that i appreciate it yeah man. yeah yeah so we, we we watch this space yeah and see what happens next yeah it's all and i'll, re all I'll reach out to you about the 12th okay uh, our, you know in regards to the 12th we're, we're just in the early okay. uh, stages of it now and some other things too but will that be, will that, my mouth hmm? is it will that be a live thing on the 12th then or is that pre recording stuff for no, it no, no no it'll be yeah you know i mean I, i'm a big believer in the live thing i mean we're yeah. playing the mixtapes you know on youtube and facebook now because that's really the precursor to the multiple channel handheld app access network that we're creating uh, this makes it very real and uh, very impactful. So yeah, definitely on twelve twelve. And, and I'm not talking about an all day thing. We're we're gonna be doing stuff all day long. Uh, there's gonna be a focal point of a two or three hours where we may have uh, people pop in for fifteen minutes and just have a chat. You know, have some tea and just uh, whatever comes. You know, spontaneously. You know how yeah. you know how that goes. That sounds <laughs> so. Yeah, it sounds good. All it right. sounds. Good. And, and thank you, Todd, you know, thank you for, for the invitation and thank you for all the work that, you're, that you're doing. And work isn't the right word, really, either, either is it? But you, you know what I mean, you know, thank, thanks for you. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't mind the, the, uh, the, uh, the term work, you know, yeah. I don't mind it at all. Yeah, okay. I, I, I actually, uh, I, I think we are doing work, you know, I think, I think we, there's a part of us or parts of us that came here to do some things. And if we could just get the hell out of our way, it'd be a lot easier. And I think we are starting to do that. I think we're starting to do that. So, yeah. but I'll reach out to you. Uh, I'm give my best to your beautiful friend. I just uh, sent her a friend request or answered it because I just saw it when I pulled her name up. Okay. And uh, you guys enjoy your time together. And uh, yeah. you know, I Thank know you. that you are. All you right. Take Thank care, and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, All yeah, right, and I'll see you. Love yeah, lots of love. Bye for now. All right. We'll see y'all a little bit later.